Hey everyone, today I am playing with some watercolors and sketchbooks and brushes and having fun painting some sunflowers. I love sunflowers and I've been driving around in the last couple of weeks and I've seen a few fields here and there. I'm always, you know, driving on the way, bringing my girls somewhere. But I really want to stop one day and actually go into a field and, you know, maybe actually paint on location. We'll see how that goes. I think <laughs> I think soon they're dying anyway. It's the end of summer here. Um, yeah, so I just, it's one of, sunflowers is something I have painted before. I really enjoy it and I think it's a really fun opportunity to play around with color. So that's mostly what I want to talk about today. I also want to give credit to one of Jean Haynes' videos. I definitely had that kind of in my mind as I was playing. Um, I took a lot of her, like I watched a lot of her videos on the Artist Network TV. That's a great resource. So. If you're interested, I will leave a link below. It's not an affiliated link or anything. Uh, I just really enjoy their videos there. So I started with the Jean Haynes set of paints, which I have uh, kind of a review on it on my channel. You can check that out. But that set is great for florals and it's also great for sunflowers. Now, one of the things that I love the most like one of the things that I love the most, I'm going to repeat myself, in painting is that I don't limit myself to reality. Let's say it like that. I'm not interested in creating anything that, you know, that looks exactly like it does in real life. And on the contrary, I prefer and I also respond better to artwork that has, I don't know, colors that speak to me. And most of the time it tends to be, for me personally, it's obviously a personal preference type of thing, not, you know, super realistic type of, you know, muted earth colors. No. So Sunflower is actually a really great opportunity to play around with paints and you'll see what I mean. I put that also into practice. So it also has a very simple shape, a sunflower, and I kind of wish I played a little bit more with the angles. I think it just looks better definitely as like a, you know, complete painting, even though I'm, I'm just having fun in my different sketchbooks here. Uh, but I think it's it's really fun to play around a little bit with the angles and not just paint that front view of a sunflower. It's definitely it's just a lovely flower, no matter how you know how you look at it. But I think it's just more interesting to paint different angles. Anyway, what I love about sunflowers is they're happy, happy colors and they just make you happy, right? And I tend to stay with yellow for the leaves, but then everything else, I feel like it's a good opportunity to just play with color. Now, if you want to think a little bit about it or go into color theory, you can you know, you can get to the part where purple is a really great choice to add to this because yellow and purple are complementary colors and they really make the other, make each other kind of pop and vibrate when you combine them. So I really loved and I think those were like my favorites, the flowers that I painted where there was some purple, mostly in the center uh, of the flower. It's just, to me, that was the most appealing. Now, again, this is all personal preference. And I think the fun part is just having, you know, trying different things and seeing what you like and what you respond to. So I'll talk a little bit about supplies. I mentioned the paints, the brushes. I think the one that makes life so much easier here is to find a brush that kind of makes the shape of the petals for you 
And then you really, you, you can just basically stamp the brush, which is what I did here. I'm using a quill brush by Jackson's and there are a lot of options. Can we just appreciate how that yellow pushes all the colors in the middle? <laughs> so you see, I was just trying to incorporate maybe some of the pinks in this set. Now I did add my one of my favorite pinks, which is the Holbein Bright Rose. That's the one at the very, very top right corner that you see. Uh, but other than that, I think all the colors that I used at this point are from the Jean Haynes set. And it was a lot of fun. These colors are just fun, a joy to paint with. Now let's talk a little bit about the paper. What you see here, the tiny little uh, book that I'm using is from the Traveler's Notebook. I just wanted to zoom you in so you can see a bit better. The Traveler's Notebook Company, their watercolor paper insert. It's really fun. You know, it's a tiny thing. This is like the passport size. I'm really enjoying the paper. It shows some of the granulations. Again, if I didn't mention it at the beginning, at the end of the video, there are going to be close-ups of everything. So you can really get a better idea of how the colors look together and how they look on the paper. Uh, this was fun. If you want the granulation of paint to come through, paper has a big role in it. Now, I always recommend using watercolor paper when you're using watercolors, but you can kind of, it really depends on the technique, I feel. And if you do like light washes or very detailed work, you can sometimes get away with not like student grade paper. If you're doing very like loose fluid type of watercoloring, then I'd say for best results, go for the good stuff. Now, personally, I like to work in a sketchbook. I feel that's the least um, intimidating way of painting for me. And I love having those finished sketchbooks filled with, you know, mess ups. Some are better, some are worse, some are ugly. Some are hideous, but then somehow when it's a complete sketchbook, it still makes me feel really good, like that sense of accomplishment, as opposed to just a pile of papers. That's me, personally. And if you're using a sketchbook, unless you are binding your own, which I do intend to do um, for a couple of reasons, I won't go into that now. But if you are not binding your own, then you're kind of a little somewhat limited by what's on the market and especially if you want to use vegan supplies so i've talked about this in the in the past i don't want to get into it um, again but some of my favorite sketchbooks like watercolor sketchbooks watercolor paper sketchbooks have animal products in them and so I've had to search for other alternatives I haven't found a lot to be honest but one that I did find are the Hannemühle sketchbooks it's a German company I think almost all of their papers are vegan and I bought a couple of the sketchbooks and you'll see that's the one I started with in this video. I just picked that up in my store. The paper is beautiful. It's more cold press. It has texture to it. And that means also the granulation shows on it beautiful. I really love using granulating colors and I love using them on um, cold press or rough paper because that really allows, you know, the the paint to kind of settle in the little grooves of the paper. That's my personal preference. So if that's something that matters to you, you should really test out your papers and you will see a difference on how the color looks on different papers. I think we got into that. I think we made that point clear, right? Okay, so this was a little sketch that I did uh, the day before. And here I used some of my Aquarius paints. You can see here I went for, I don't know, let's say more of a earthy look to it. So the centers are kind of not as purple as they are. And while I, I like a lot of things about this particular sketch, 
I think when it comes to the sunflowers themselves, I do prefer to have a bit more of that purple in the middle. But um, again, these are all very granulating colors and I just, oh, it's just a joy to look at. So I just love how it looks. Now, a lot of, I think the one of the biggest challenges of painting in a very loose and fluid manner is you know you still need you need those washes right you need those washes with all the flowy color so that it looks like the way that you want it to look what is very appealing to me but you still need detail and contrast and value to make a successful painting I I don't think I've ever seen a painting that I would consider, you know, finished or appealing. And I'm talking about my own art, but also other artists that you can just do that with like one wash. It's just you can't have it both ways, right? If you want loose, flowy color, you need a lot of water and then you can't do a lot of detail work. So that's where things starts to get challenging, definitely for me, you know, I'm sharing my own struggles with you. And then it you get to the point of, okay, then how do I add those details? And where do I add those details? And what is too much? And what is not enough? And whatever. And of course, there are no rules and everyone has different preferences. And you know, what is too much for me will be not enough for someone else. So I don't know, it's about trial and error. But yeah, definitely a challenging uh, part in painting loosely. Um, I tend to find that what works for me is definitely adding most detail and contrast in the area that is the focal point and then keeping everything, whatever else that I can keep uh, very loose. It's just what I like. I don't find very detailed, realistic type of drawings uh, appealing. I can appreciate them. I can appreciate the skill. But, you know, when, when we talk about, like, good art, there are no rules. And it's just what makes you feel excited, you know, what is appealing to you. And for me, it's a particular style. And for someone else, it can be something totally different. So um, that's another part of the beauty of art. So yeah, just trying to add uh, a bit more detail. Did I talk about the paints? So these are Aquarius paints. These are Polish. Uh, they're a little bit hard to get. I got a comment on one of my recent videos saying that um, these are like better value than the Van Gogh ones, which I've been talking about lately. And uh, I don't know, it's it's a little bit hard to tell and it's a bit hard co to compare because good value is, you know, if you can't get these, <laughs> if you can only find them in like a couple of shops online. And when I go to my local store, I can pick up a tube of Van Gogh paint. So it doesn't really help me if the price point is better. So there are always a lot of considerations to make or take under consideration no you can't say that but <laughs> there are many things to keep in mind also when I'm recommending something to you you know I have to kind of give you the whole picture and I hate recommending things that are not easily or widely available so yeah but then on the other hand if you find something good and for some people it is available you do want to talk about it right so yeah it's always a catch 22 but yeah these paints are lovely i find some of the pigments or some of the paints that i have are a little bit anemic and Maybe not my favorite in each like paint category, but all in all, these are lovely. They have some beautiful mixtures there and some beautiful granulating colors. So definitely something to check out if you're interested. In that last sketching part, I added some cobalt violet and the way that that looks against the yellow is watercolor magic to me. We can see the, the close-ups at the end. Okay, so... 
Now I've painted already like a few pages of sunflowers and I feel I can be brave and mess up and try different things and boy oh boy do I make a mess here. So first of all I switched to a larger um, sketchbook and this is the Arteza one. I think it's a great option for the price. The paper is nice but the other two that I was working in were um, I, I preferred them with this type of painting uh, but it still worked fine the granulation still shows nicely also on this paper so uh, all in all I I still do recommend the sketchbook but again if you want to do a lot of like glazing and using a lot of water and washes and flowy watercolors Paper is a big issue and I'd have to say that probably a lot of sketchbooks are not the best for those purposes. Okay, so here we are getting brave and making a mess. I had this idea in my mind that I was going to do like a rainbow type of painting style. So I'm going to go with the colors of the rainbow, the order of colors on the rainbow and add them to my painting. And you can see what happened was a huge mess. This brush is beautiful, but I think it was just too big for the size that I was working in because it just had so much water and I just got like a huge pool of paint and yeah, it was a mess. But we are going to power through and just see what happens. So <laughs> I calmed myself down a little later. Um, I just wanted to play around with some paint and what I'm going to explore in the other side of this page after I make some more mess is doing the center of the sunflower with kind of lighter colors in value and I'm going to use mostly lavender and um, wisteria and cobalt violet from my palette. So that was lavender and now I'm adding wisteria. And what am I adding now? Some blue and then some something darker. I think it's some neutral tint from my palette just to see if, you know, sometimes you can kind of play on color as your value if that makes sense like a, a wash of blue will look darker than a wash of yellow even if the color itself even if the blue is not super dark so i was just playing around with that and i do like that and i think i can make sunflowers where a lot of the center uh, could be those lavender and wisteria colors and then maybe just add a little bit of darker color uh, some darker values to, you know, like the, some of the, um, cir like the, the circular edge. <laughs> what is with the words today? <laughs> you know, just the border of that, um, center piece of the flower. So I did like that. And it was, you know, you learn from everything. And even if you don't, we're just having fun with watercolors. I didn't want to edit this out because that thing on the left side is a major disaster. That is one ugly sunflower. And <laughs> yeah, I embrace it. <laughs> and I'll also talk a little bit about, you know, messes and what to do with them and what to do with these sketches. I mean, can you do anything with them or are they just meant to stay as they are in your sketchbook while you learn and move on to something else. I don't know, you can decide. But what's definitely, you know, what is very clear in this huge sunflower on the left side is that it does have some dimension. You know, you see how the area around that central part, it looks more dimensional because of the different values. We have the dark colors, on the kind of bottom right area and then the lighter ones in the middle. 
Uh, these brushes, I'm also trying out. These are from the Alvaro Castaneda, I want to, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh, he has this set of really large brushes for a Skoda. And these are beautiful. I just, I need to paint bigger to really enjoy them because this is just not going to do it. So I have hopes. I have plans. I really, really would like to play, to paint more outside and we'll see how that works you know because i also love to stay home when i can and yeah we'll see so this is i really like this color combo i think that lavender and a little bit of i think there's some ultramarine blue with the yellow really vibrates and looks very appealing to me now about the turquoise stems not so sure about that i think that's a bit much i think something more neutral would work better but if we don't try we don't know you know we're not gonna know if we like it or not so i gotta try and my logic was that if i'm going to use turquoise and then the yellow is going to run into that i'm going to get shades of green and i do and it looks lovely but it's still a little bit too like bright there in your face which of course there are like ways to fix okay Let's look at this. Now, I don't know about you, but this just makes me happy. Uh, this was also experiments with pink. I think this is kind of the only place where I used pink. I don't know. That that opera pink, Ah, that is a tricky color for me. I think it's one of those colors that you really, really have to be careful with. Uh, you know, unless you're Jean Haynes and then whatever you do is gorgeous. But yeah, it was just fun to play with. So let's take a closer look. This is such an important step and it's probably best to make also notes. You know, you're using a sketchbook. You can just write in your sketchbook which colors you used and how you feel about it. So let's go through my sketches here. I'll start with this one. This is the first one that I made. You don't see it on video, but I used the Aquarius colors. I love this, even though I really like having the center more of a purple color the mixture here of those greens like earthy golden green and also that little bit of darker blue i think it turned out great and adding some cobalt violet around the flowers again really makes those yellow orangey leaves pop right it's like these two colors together they are just magic so all in all you can see also the beautiful granulation in this uh, sketchbook this is one of my favorites i just love how it turned out and coming back again and adding those details makes a huge difference um, in my opinion it just looks a lot more uh, finished so those are you know those more accurate lines that we added to the flower petals this just makes me happy right i mean looking at that the granulation how the color flows ah happiness and this is the second spread that i made in the same sketchbook uh, this one i didn't have yet the chance to get back and add some detail but i really love the as i said the purple in the center is really something that i think for me is the way to go granulation here in the jean haynes colors beautiful that one flower at the bottom right with the orangey leaves that's a no-no i don't like it it's just i really prefer the petals to be more of that golden yellow type of color so let's move on to the tiny uh, traveler's notebook insert. This is such a fun one to paint in. And you know, you can make a flower, like one flower, and it really fills the page. So this was my pink exploration. Um, all in all, I kind of like the huge mess that, that it came to be. And um, yeah, that contrast here also with the more somewhat precise lines <laughs> and then just all the splatters just the whole thing it makes me happy and um, this is a sketch that i made 
in the same notebook the day before. Again, using here, I think I used again the Aquarius colors. I'm not sure. You see, that's the problem when you're painting a lot and you use a lot of paint. You really should write these things down. But can we appreciate the granulation here? These inserts are fantastic. I'm loving them and I'm going to order a bunch more just because it's so much fun. Okay, moving on. So the last ones are the ones that I made in the large Arteza journal. I think you can see the color looks beautiful on them. You can still see some of the granulation. The one on the left was a huge mess, so <laughs> I don't think I have a lot to say about it. But these two, I got to say, I really like the use of lavender and wisteria and cobalt violet for the centers and then maybe a touch of something darker just to give it dimension. But those colors with the bright yellow of the petals, love. And also my turquoise stems, I guess I would like go back and add some more color, but just look how beautiful also the, the turquoise looks. That's cobalt teal, of course. Of course, the color of my dreams. So just a couple more words on what you can do with these. You can leave them in your sketchbooks or you can take photos or scan them and then have some fun with your filters and photo editing or image editing software, which is what I did here. So just playing around and then what you can do with that, you can have it printed on, for example, a little pencil case or postcards. I like to do this at home just to print it on some watercolor paper. And here's a little um, bookmark that I made with an older sketch. I just made it into a tag, added some stitching, and you know, you can play with the colors and everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another video soon. Thanks for watching, bye.